Hi Ted, I'm back again after a few weeks of pretty serious gardening. But I found time to uh, make a couple of um, driftwood miniatures. This is the first one, it's the usual uh, maritime theme, the favourite subject. That is a lot, lot smaller than the, um, well, the, the ones thing you've is, done I'm in the past. I'm running out of space now, so I'm, I'm hoping to start making stuff a bit smaller, so. Uh, At least it's, it's easier to um, well, put it, them I'm, on display. Well, that's right, they'll go on the smallest of shelves and stuff. Um, just a simple. What inspired this piece? I'll just look anything new with the seaside, to be honest. Um, Probably because we live just about as far as you can get from yeah. the sea in, in the Midlands yeah. here. Having said that, it's still only about 90 miles, isn't it? But when we were kids in the 50s, we went to the seaside once a year on, a, a, on a steam train. So, yeah, they've always had that bit of magic for me. Yeah. Anything to do with the seaside. Just, you know, just a double double pivot, simple just movement. Simple that. mechanism, yeah. Which is always the it's a best. nice effect though, isn't it? Well, yeah, I've never made anything this small before. Well, like I say, you can just put it anywhere. It takes up no yeah. space. But it's colourful. The only problem with working on anything this small is you can't really get much detail in it. I suppose the smaller they are, the, um, it's hard the more difficult it is then. Yeah, yeah. As you can see. How small it is and how large my hands are. Yeah. It's it you know, it's an added challenge really. It's a nice little seed, uh, isn't it? Well it's a nice idea. Yeah. Yeah. But the one the, the one you made next was uh, well, uh, it's a bit bigger, isn't it? Well the thing is, um whenever I make anything like this, halfway through I haven't really think of different ways of doing it or better. So I've often made two of the, you know, a lot of the stuff I've made. Yeah. So, although it's a bit bigger than that one, it's still a lot smaller than a lot of the things I do make. Yeah, this one's definitely got a bit more to it, hasn't it? Yeah, yeah. But being that little bit bigger, I can put a bit more detail in it, you know, it actually does more. It's quite colourful. Can you see the... Um... Oh, I'm turning it the wrong way. I'm looking at it back to front. Does it only go round? Can you only turn it the one way then? No, it's just normal crank lock. Your mum saw it this afternoon and she thought the older chap looked like Prince Charles. Do you think so? He does a bit, yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah, I never, never thought of that aspect of it. <coughs> just casual. <laughs> really? I don't know what the other one looks like. <laughs> <laughs> Smell of a horror film. <laughs> <laughs> well, the thing is, <clears throat> no, it's not that easy doing the passes really with them. Um, but you can see what's behind it, the, the expressions, can't you? Yeah. The, the young lad's got a whopper look, and the old man's got his weather. Put an old boot. <laughs> <clears throat> Bit more detail on here. Do you like the whole on the, uh, the, uh, the free enterprise? Yeah. That's a bit of walnut, that is. That's, that's a nice piece of wood, isn't it? Yeah, it's uh, varnished. <coughs> Just polyurethane varnish. Now, if we took a closer look at the light out. It's to... Is it shining? There's light on it. Oh, you can. Uh, yeah, it's spinning round. Yeah. Does it. The... I was going to say, there's not a light, an actual no, light no. inside, is there? All that is just a bit of, uh, you know, fibrous tin fall at the kitchen. Nice effect, isn't it? It is, yeah. That was a bit of a challenge. The water looks quite um, more things in the waves on the cliffs. I like that. It's nice, isn't it? Yeah, it's uh, it's just fun. I like I like the diorama part of anything like this. You know, it's. I must have been looking at your, some of your painting techniques, <laughs> your videos. <clears throat> I 
I just noticed the church in the graveyard. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, they better do. That's what I'm saying. I like, I like putting the detail in, and the diorama. Oh, yeah. I was tempted to try and put a bit of writing on the tombstones, but I just can't work that small. <laughs> Is there anything around the back of it? It's just well, I know you'd say that. <coughs> so. <laughs> Not a lot of that. Now, what you should have said was, "Can you take the lid off?" Has it got a lid? Yeah. That's the secret. Can you see it? <coughs> Spot the lid. Is it the the grassy? How's that then? I weren't expecting that. No, you weren't, were you? <laughs> How's that then? That took a bit of figuring out, to be honest. So it's a bit more uh, complicated, this... this uh, then, yeah, yeah. The mechanics on this, isn't it? But simple. Have you used that star before, like using like, like barrels? Well, I don't remember seeing that. They're what you call eccentric cams. I've, I've used something similar mm. on some of the other um, automata, yeah. They're just eccentric cams, you know. There's different ways you can do it. And you just that's, have to do experiments. Well, that's it, you see. I mean, experiment with. See, that's um, lead. That's a counterbalance, right? Just to bring it back in position for the next revolution. Sorry. And it's just, I suppose, it's just trial and error, isn't it? Trying to a lot of trial to get it all yeah. right. I spend as much time thinking about it when, you know, when you've actually figured out how to do it. Making it's the easy part to know. Yeah. So I suppose, but, uh, yeah, it's like just the, the, the planning but, uh, elements. That's just a bit of uh, <coughs> two mil aluminium. All I do, I'll like, I I get that to shape. Then I cover it with, I get some cotton cloth and a mixture of my usual polyfiller with um, builder's polyfiller with white PVA. Coat both, coat both sides of the uh, cloth and just fill out the corners I couldn't manage with the, the aluminium. And then just um, basically, here's a technique I told you last time, but I paint it with um, acrylic paints and then pour on uh, the grass scatter. Yeah. Yeah, it's got quite a nice effect. Yeah, it looks quite and authentic. All, see, all of this is it's just all driftwood. Everything's made Everything, of driftwood. It's just mainly driftwood, yeah. That's for a little, very little to make. I suppose, yeah, it's just time. I suppose time's the most. Uh... So now, last last time, I, uh, last video I did, I told you about uh, you know one or two money making tips. Yeah. Now, last year I scrapped one of the grandchildren's push bikes. It was a bit tatty. But when I looked at it, I looked at the spokes and I thought, I wonder if the metal's any good. So when I realised it's quite strong and flexible, and of course you can bend it any shape you want, Yeah. and it keeps its strength. So that's where the... Uh, that's what you've used for the... For that's, the... Well, that's the drive shaft. Yeah. Just spokes from an old bike, you see. Um, there's many ways you can save yourself money. Yeah, Very good. Now another one I can tell you about is um, when I went in the building trade when I was 18, I developed quickly what we used to call the tatters nature. And that wasn't painful. It's still to look at something. Other than what it was designed for, I think of what you can use it for. Yeah. So uh, about a couple of two years ago, I went to a, a car boot sale in uh, Whitaker, Warwickshire. And there's a young lady there selling uh, a cot, which the children are there ground. I think she wanted to get rid of it. She only wanted a pound for it. But when I looked at it, I didn't say cot. I saw about 18 pieces of uh, about five-eighths beach dell. Absolutely dead straight. I felt a bit of guilt to give her a pound actually, but 
when I quickly get over it. So <laughs> then I'm saying that's how you can yeah. you see bargains everywhere. It's just it's just spotting it. Yeah. That's it, you so. say. So that's my tip for this one. <laughs> so um it's a lot this I'll do then. It's good, yeah, very good. So I can try and get it back in now. I'm doing it back to front now by the way. I don't normally do it like that. That one too bad, really. There you go. See, you build anything like this, you've got to have ready access. Because you know, if you get something malfunction, it's no putting half destroying it just to make no, a no. Simple, simple repair. So you've always got to have access whenever you go. And here, just a bit technical on it, is it? Ready access. I can strip all of this down in seconds. All of this just. That's just tell by friction. That would pull off there. All that's tell by friction. It yeah. would still pull apart, you say. It's simple. Easy to work on. That's the main requisite when you build anything like this. The maintenance. There comes some work in the many years in the building. You try that look after stuff. Yeah. So it's about... I quite enjoyed it. Very nice. But the next, I want to build the next one I build because I want to stick to the smaller stuff now. Something in between these two because that's a bit too small to get in this one. Yeah. Time. But I want to make stuff smaller than this because it's, it's still going to. You be reckon big. that one's too big? But what it is, I want to, I'm going to try. The challenge is to make something a little bit smaller than this, but I want more movement. You see, there's not enough movement on this. I quite like what I've got, but. You just want more animation. I want more animation. I'm determined. Before I start the next one, I will yeah. have sussed it out. Yeah. I want at least twice as much animation as that for something 50% smaller. That's the challenge anyway. So I'll always welcome people's comments, say what they think. You know, it's encouragement to keep going. So, um, I don't know. I will have for you in the, probably middle, middle somewhere. I'll have something else anyway. So, if anyone got any suggestions, I look forward to hearing from you. So, until then, I'll say bye for now.